The rain began on the afternoon of Memorial Day, May 30th, 1889. That night, from 8 to 10 inches of rain fell in the mountains. The streams filled, flooded, and rushed to the valleys. By the morning of May 31st, Lake Connemont, a man-made lake in the mountains, was rising higher and higher, backing up into the woodland streams. At the South Fork Dam, a group of men struggled to clear debris clogging the spillway, raise the level of the dam, and dig another spillway. By 11 o'clock, the water level had risen to the top of the dam. The young engineer, John Park, rode to South Fork to telegraph a We have your attention. If you would like to watch the Park movie, please make your way to the theater on the upper level. Thank you. At 2.45 p.m., Johnstown received the last of three telegraph warnings. The dam is becoming dangerous and may possibly go. The alarm was not spread. At 10 minutes after 3, the dam collapsed. A giant wave of water, a rolling ball with the force of Niagara Falls, roared down the Connemaw Valley. George Fisher saved his family. His farmhouse vanished in an instant. At South Fork, Michael Mann, an English coal miner, was the first victim. The water slammed into the side of the mountain, and the backwash drove a bridge 200 yards upstream. Most of South Fork, built on a hillside, was spared. Only four people were killed. Below South Fork, the narrow valley compressed the water to a 75-foot wall. At an oxbow, the flood divided. Part of the wave rushed through the railroad cut. Tons of debris piled against a massive sandstone viaduct 75 feet high. The second wave jammed more timber, rocks, and earth against the stone piers and sealed the arch. The surging water backed up nearly 90 feet to create another lake. For an instant, the flood was stopped. Then, the viaduct collapsed. The water burst toward Mineral Point with explosive force. The pretty sawmill town was wiped clean. Sixteen people died. The flood had become a grinding mass of timbers, trees, rocks, and rails. Houses, bridges, and railroad cars moved with it. The wave moved faster at the top than at the bottom, continually rolling over itself and crushing anything beneath. Surging against a mountain, the water carved a new channel for the river. In his locomotive beside the river, engineer John Hess couldn't see the flood, but he heard it coming. Hess tied down his whistle and went shrieking toward the railroad yards of East Connemont. The whistle gave what little warning anyone had. Hess said of his heroics, I didn't know what else to do. I didn't see what else I could do. Passengers ran from two stranded trains, slipping in the mud, crawling over and under train cars, leaping over and into a ditch. More than 50 people died. Half the town was destroyed, including 40 houses, two hotels, and the railroad station. The force of the floodwaters pushed 30 80-ton locomotives from 100 yards to a mile downstream. The wave picked up speed through the open valley and struck prosperous tree-lined Woodvale with no warning, killing 314 people and 89 horses trapped in a stable. The wreckage choked torrent snapped off trees, crushed houses, and scoured the streets, leaving Woodvale a mud flag. The Gautier wire works exploded in clouds of roiling black steam and added rolls of barbed wire to the monstrous flood. At 4.07, the flood struck Johnstown. People first heard the sound, a grinding, rumbling, roaring, and then saw a dark spray, a mass of dust, a black, billowing smoke. Survivors called it the death mist. The flood followed three paths through Johnstown. 
smashed against Westmont Hill and hurled a backwash up Stony Creek to destroy Kernville and Moxham. The wave surged back, created a vicious whirlpool, and lodged houses, people, and animals against the stone bridge. The stone bridge held, damming the flood, and Johnstown became a lake, spreading across 30 acres, 10 to 30 feet deep. The water cut through an earth embankment and struck Millville and Cambria City in another violent surge. After smashing Cambria City, the waters spread out and lost their destructive force. About 6 p.m., the mass of wreckage at the stone bridge caught fire. For the people trapped there, it became an immense funeral fire. A day of horrors was followed by a night of horrors. Houses, factories, and neighborhoods had been destroyed. 27,000 people were homeless. 2,209 men, women, and children were dead.